We do have bye weeks this week, which means that positions are going to get thinner. Okay. The rule number one during bye weeks is don't drop players that can help other teams. What do I mean by that? Starters that you might be on the fence about, this is not the time to drop them, okay? Especially for a one-week player. Just know every team is going through bye weeks. And I talk, I have this on my note sheet as well. Right now there's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's like third on the 20 to 25 startable players this week that are just out. Detroit, the Chargers, the Eagles and the Tennessee Titans all have a buy this week. So don't overly panic if your lineup has like one sore spot in it. Instead of dropping a reliable name or a reliable player, what I would do instead is maybe use one of those bench spots that you have with the weaker position and just find the player with upside. So you have a Trey Tucker, play him this week instead of dropping somebody else. Or if you have a running back, it's okay if they're the backup this week instead of dropping maybe a questionable name that if they – if they change their performance this week, you would change your valuation on them, all right? So when it comes to ads and drops, be very careful about who you drop. Classic case of this is DeAndre Swift last week. Even if you don't believe in him now, even if you didn't believe in him then, he had a good week, and now somebody will find value with that if, instead of you just dropping it, okay? So players that we did all offseason, we spent a lot of offseason time evaluating their roles, drafting them in high draft capital spots, don't panic on their value right now and drop them for one hit wonders, especially some of the guys I'm about to talk about right now here at the running back position. All right. So just a quick little tidbit there. It's going to be easy to drop some players. Make sure you're not dropping anybody that can help out another team. If they hit, especially those four and three and one teams that can afford a few L's. As far as waiver wire running backs go, Kareem hunt is probably the top target here, obviously with 14 carries uh, in the game against the chargers. He has, um, he has the ability to obviously be like an RB2 or RB3 for your team moving forward. So a couple question marks. What's the involvement with Carson Steele after his fumble? What's the involvement with Samaj P. Ryan, who did have a goal line opportunity in the game and gets the receiving work? And then Clyde edwards Hilaire is also scheduled to return as well. So what's this look like moving forward is the big question for Kareem Hunt. But to show he only played 43% of the snaps and they gave him 14 carries, it shows that they trust him to be their, their guy. And he performed at a pretty good rate too. 69 yards, had two catches in the receiving game. So I fully trust Kareem Hunt as an RB2, RB3. Now what's left to be determined is do the Chiefs keep him on the field for more than 50% of the snaps? That's probably the big question when it comes to Kareem Hunt. If they do, Kareem Hunt's probably going to be an every week running back two or running back three. For some reason, he's not even owned in more than 50% of leagues. So make sure that somebody didn't drop him or forget about him. Uh, even in your 10-team leagues or your 18-team leagues, this is a player you might want to have on your bench in those and is worth starting in bye weeks um, here for the 12-team, 14, and 16-team leagues that are out there, all right? I really like Kareem Hunt. And I think he's a safe play. For those worried about Isaiah Pacheco potentially coming back, um, I don't know when Isaiah Pacheco is coming back, but based on Andy Reid's comments, it does not seem like it's going to be anything immediate. All right, so if you're worried about, like, Kareem Hunt's going to lose all of his value, I don't really see that happening. He's the player I would want. If something happens, he's an easy drop over the next couple of weeks. But this is the player I would spend, you know, if, if I had Fab and he was available, I would be spending like 25% to 30% of my Fab trying to get Kareem Hunt this week. High waiver priority, that's got to go for Kareem Hunt, who could be, I mean, he could be the rest of, the rest of the season RB2 if things pan out the right way. Next up, uh, Trey Sermon. This is, I, I talked about not dropping anybody that can help your team. Trey Sermon. We're still waiting on an update. I haven't seen the official update for Jonathan Taylor. But as we're waiting for the update, he he does have a mild high ankle sprain. High ankle sprains can last anywhere from three to six weeks, depending, depending on his severity. But this could be one that he also plays through. So something to monitor as the week goes on with Jonathan Taylor. But Trey Sermon, who did have 17 carries and 88 yards last year when Jonathan Taylor missed some time, could be a decent spot start, good fill-in here for at least the next week or two. If Taylor were to miss those games, he would be on the RB3 flex radar. I don't think Sermon is great, but as a volume play and an offense that focuses on the run, uh, running attack, he's somebody I would pick up. Just I, I would temper expectations when it came to him. Probably a couple catches in the passing game, but more than likely going to be a 15 to 20 rushing attempt type player, especially if this is a Joe Flacco-led offense here. Uh, over this weekend. But Trey Sermon isn't a player I would spend a lot of, of waiver dollars on unless we get a significant update with Jonathan Taylor and that he's not going to play for the next week or two. We did also, just to note, we did also see this with Joe Mixon where 
it looked like we didn't have a firm answer with the high ankle. He wasn't available uh, week three. Then in week four, it looked like he was trending, got into limited practice, didn't play in week four. They just kept him safe. So we could see the same thing happen with Jonathan Taylor. But for now, it sounds like something mild. Maybe they get him in there. And then the last the last running back I really want to talk about right now is Tank Bigsby. Um, we've seen Travis Etienne catch a shoulder injury over the weekend, but uh, Tank Bigsby came in and did work in his carries. And he had he got an injury in week two and kind of had his, his snaps limited in week two and week three. But we saw him hit the 35-40 mark. I can't remember exactly what it was for Tank Bigsby. But around the 35-40 marker when it comes to snap percentage um, for Tank Bigsby over the weekend. So if he's going to get the goal, if he's going to get any chances at goal line work, if he does get an increase to like 40 to 50% of the snaps, this is, it could be a problem not just for Travis Etienne, but for fantasy managers who now have another dilemma because he becomes on the flex radar if he's getting that kind of volume. He's not a great pass catcher, but if he's getting goal line work and he does have opportunities uh, in this offense, then I think he will be on the flex radar during bye weeks for a lot of teams. So the production's been there. We just haven't really seen this balance out to like a 60-40, 50-50 type split. If it does, Tank Bigsby needs to be on your rosters and then probably in your lineups at, uh, during some weeks given the matchup. So Tank Bigsby, I wouldn't spend any, any waiver dollars on him. Just try to get him at a zero bid or maybe a one or two dollar bid. And then when it comes to your waiver priority, I wouldn't use waiver priority on Tank Bigsby. I would just let the process, because he's not starting. This is more of a week of a he- uh, week ahead type play than it is a absolute need to go get this player type of thing. And if you're looking for like just kind of flex options and maybe some of these guys aren't available, Justice Hill and Tyler Algier out there. Algier, just in case the, the Bijan Robinson injury is affecting him more than we know. Uh, they're on a short week as well. So if you need a one week option, They'll have 10 days to rest after that, and I think Bijan goes back to his normal workload. But for now, if you need Algier and he's out there, go ahead and grab him. Same thing for Justice Hill. He doesn't offer a whole lot of upside, but he does offer some pass catching floor, uh, as we saw over the week, uh, over the weekend, um, with his six catches he had over the weekend. All right, moving on to receiver real quick. Let me answer some questions, and I'll move on to receiver. Is good shit, y'all. Is good shit. Y'all like the waiver episodes? <laughs> 